Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Today we are in Westchester once again. We were invited into Goodwill Fire Company. This is company number two. They are actually in the borough of Westchester and they invited us in to take a look at their house. Welcome to Goodwill Fire Company in Westchester. This company was founded in 1883, but this building was built in 2004. Got a lot of cool features, including a pole, so let's go take a look. As we come through the front door, we walk right into the foyer area, and what do we see? We see the fire pole that's actually being used by all these people. Here is a mural that was painted by one of their firefighters uh, a while ago, and this painting has the depth of what this job is about. Looking at the face of that fire chief and the anxiety in his face, that he's rescuing the people. It even has, you know, it, up in the back corner here, the carriage, horse-drawn carriage. So it tells us a lot of history of this company and all the things that are involved in being a firefighter. Coming out of the foyer area, I'm immediately met with a piece of steel. This steel, again, was from the Twin Towers, over the tragedy that we had. They reached out and asked for a piece so they have a remembrance of what happened during that day. A lot of the firehouses here in Chester County, Pennsylvania, are connected to these. You know, obviously, the steel was made here in Coatesville. Whether this piece specifically was, we weren't sure, but they wanted to have a memory. So they were able to get a piece of steel and mount it right in the foyer for everybody to take a look at. We're going to go down the hallway here to their radio room and see what they got inside. Coming in the radio room, it's a pretty typical radio room here, but they have a very large screen TV to tell you all the dispatches, what's going on in the county, whether it's their dispatch or whether it's the neighboring dispatch. They're able to monitor that. They use the uh, active 911 system, the IM responding systems, in order to get their dispatches here. So it's very clean, very elegant, a little place to sit. You can actually look out into the engine bay, keep an eye on your trucks, Kind of sit back and relax, but uh, this is a good place to do that. They set it up very well. So make sure you stay and watch to the end because we're going to show you some of the engines. Well, up on the wall here, they actually have a new engine that's being built for them right now. So it's pretty cool to see their display, see the uh, drawings that they have on what's coming up. And uh, hopefully one day we'll be able to see that too. Coming out of the radio room to the left is actually the engine bay. We're going to take you down that a little bit later. But let's take a moment right now. Do us a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification. We appreciate everybody that's been helping us out over this time. Uh, we continue to grow, and we wouldn't be doing it without you. So thank you very much. Hit that subscribe. Hit that notification. Right to my left here is going to be the captain's uh, office. He's got his... Uh, Workstation in there, he's got a little lounge uh, to kind of sit back, relax. That's where a lot of the business takes place. One thing I noticed in this building is because it was built in 2004, they are definitely handicap compliant. This is another station, station number two, that actually has an elevator. This actually goes up the second and a third floor. So having an elevator being uh, compliant for the public to come in, uh, very cool to have. I don't see that a whole lot. As we make our way down the hallway, you know, every firehouse has memorabilia that they want to portray. But this one's a little bit unique. I believe the current vice president actually did some traveling, and he goes to different fire stations, which everybody loves to do, and he got some helmets from different places, and he's portraying those. That's just a, another way to say, you know, we're a brotherhood. No matter if I live across the pond in the U.K. or Germany or Australia, or we live here in America and, you know, we live on the East Coast versus the West Coast or something like that, sharing helmets, sharing our, what we do, very cool thing to display. Goodwill Fire Company is 100% volunteer. And one of the things that they decided to do well, for about a year ago uh, is have a live-in program. Here's one of the dorms that they're using for their live-in program. Now these are set up as basically college room dorms. They actually provide a lot of the wooden furniture. You got the, uh, your dresser, you got a desk, you got your armoire. And these live-in programs are designed to help with the volunteerism. They have a couple of different things here that they need to be able to qualify to become a live-in. One, you have to have a full-time job or going to school and a part-time job. You need to give them 40 hours worth of service. Now, you know, we're here 24-7. That 40 hours worth of service is pretty easily met. They give you free room. You don't pay for utilities. You don't pay for cable. You don't pay for heating or cooling or anything like that. So having the ability to be here on the fire station to get those trucks out is important. And who doesn't want to live in a firehouse, at least for a little time? This is a cool way to supplement their volunteerism and make sure those trucks are getting out in a reasonable amount of time. So looking in this display, I noticed that they have a fire coat and a picture of one of their firefighters that had a line of duty death. His name was Chris Good. 
excellent firefighter. He worked for multiple different places. He was working for Goodwill Fire Company the day that he passed away. He finished up a fire and then a couple hours later while he was home decompressing with his family, uh, he ended up having a heart attack that he didn't survive. This guy was, you know, the epitome of what volunteer firefighting is about. And to display him in a way like this is one of the highest honors we can have. Coming out of the one of the living dorms, we're going to make our way down the hallway, still on the first level. And here we have another dorm. And then we have our offices. We have the line office offices, the executive office for the president, vice president, and we also have public bathrooms. So if you stop by, you need to use it, you want to look around, this is the place to be. So as we're making our way down the hallway, we're going up to the second floor. I noticed they got a little bit of store here. This is where you can pick up some t-shirts, maybe a hat, maybe a sweatshirt. They have the list of prices here on the wall for anybody that wants to come in and purchase something. But if you're looking at this online, get a hold of them. Send them an email, maybe give them a call, say you're interested in something, maybe we can get it shipped out to you. Pretty cool stuff to have. So as we come up to the second floor, this is where the members only are. This is actually two more dorms, plus their bunk rooms and a member's lounge. Let's go take a look. Coming off the stairway, we're immediately met with, you know, some of the pictures that every firehouse has got. Some of their old fire calls, some of their past chiefs, even their old fire station. This one, remember, was built in 2004. They moved from a two-bay, very small fire station here in Westchester off of Gay Street, uh, and they moved over here because they needed more land. So coming up here to the second floor is members only. This is for volunteers and the live-ins. In the live-in area here, they actually have their own laundry facilities. They have their own bathrooms on either side. They have a couple of more live-in dorms, and they have a bunk room for the volunteers that aren't live-ins but want to stay here during those bad weather times or those long calls. They have that opportunity. I want to take you into one more dorm. This is actually a little bit bigger, but the whole purpose of this is to show you that just because you're in a live-in program and you're working at a firehouse doesn't mean you can't make this space your own. Coming into this dorm, you know, you can clearly see that it's a little bit bigger than the one downstairs. It's got all the amenities. He added a couch himself. He added a little armoire. He's got his desk. He's got his little fridge. You know, this is a perfect place to make your own. He puts his own pictures up. What a cool way to give back to your community by not only helping out, but also living at the firehouse. Coming away from the live-in area, we come into the community area. This is the place where they get to hang out. They actually do hump day hangouts on Wednesday night. So if you have the opportunity to volunteer and you want to hang out with the guys, get to know each other, this is the place to do it. They have a full kitchen here for all the live-ins, plus anything you want to do. Maybe it's a Super Bowl Sunday, you want to cook, they have the opportunity to do that. They have a game table to play a little bit of cards. They have the old shuffleboard that everybody used to have back in the early 70s. They decided to keep that. How cool is that? They have a pool table. Everything for a person to hang out, enjoy themselves, get to know each other, and get those trucks out when it's needed. Making our way out the back here, we're going to go to the third floor. Goodwill has actually three floors. This is where they're going to have their boardroom and education. Currently, this third floor is used as their boardroom. Obviously, they got the big tables up top here. They got social distancing chairs and it's a huge room. The one thing when I was talking to the president about this area is, yes, it's used for education, yes, it's used for boardroom, but if they need to expand, maybe add some more live-ins or something like that, they have the space to do that on a third floor. So we noticed that earlier on the second floor, they have that fire pole. I'm gonna take the elevator back down to the second floor. I gotta use that fire pole. Who wouldn't wanna do that? We're back on the second floor. And I got permission from these guys to actually use the fire pole. This fire pole, all these live-ins use at every opportunity possible. I'll show you how it works. So first thing you gotta do is open the gates. And actually, when you pull on this, it opens the trap door down there. So check it out, this is how it works. Now let's go take a look at their engine bay. Making our way out into the engine bay. This is where they store all their apparatus. They have a couple of pieces here that are very cool to see. This is actually a 25 year old engine. This is the engine that's actually gonna be replaced or become a backup once they get their new engine that I showed you earlier in the, in the show. Walking down the line here, this is their newest apparatus. This is another engine, very well stocked, ready to go. Making our way down the engine bays, I'm walking outside, I noticed a bell. This bell was built back in 1886. This was actually one of the original bells that were at their old firehouse back on Gay Street. They decided to bring it over. I think they're in the process of trying to build a bell tower for it, kind of like the one we saw at Fame. Uh, but wow, that bell is huge. It still rings today. Uh, apparently, according to the live-ins, it's very loud when they do ring it. 
Next piece of apparatus here, we have their tanker. This here is a tanker that is actually utilized throughout the county. It's part of that county tanker task force that we talked about in the previous videos. If you look at the West Grove video, they have a tanker. They're part of that program here. So their area here has 85 to 90% coverage area for hydrants, but you have those outskirt developments that haven't put hydrants in. It's very important to have a tanker to get the job done. As we're making our way down, we come into one of the last piece of apparatus of the bigger floor, and this is their air light truck. Stay, pay attention, because here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna do a full station rigs tour of this thing. So hit that subscribe button, hit that notification, Look forward to that video. We're gonna talk about that in a whole lot more detail. Making our way towards the end of the building here, we're running into last two bays. This is where they keep their squad. This squad is developed just for fire, and this is where they bring those extra personnel. It fits their gear, it fits their packs, and it fits the people that need to go to the fire call. Finally, what's left is their fire police. Every fire station around here tries to have fire police help control that traffic around the fire scene, accidents. Fire police are very important. They are not forgotten, and they work well with the fire company. And one thing that's unique about this fire station is it actually has pull-through, but it also has short bays. On the back of the short bays, they actually have their workout area. They have Rescue Randy here to do all their trainings with. They have a little seating area for the guys to kind of hang out between calls when they don't want to be in their dorms or up in the community room. They're here for the public to see and be available for anything that you need. Halfway through the building, we come across another little room here. This is their air pack room. This is where they're gonna refill each of the air packs. They also have the ice machine in here so they can do all their rehab ice and cool down. Even if they're doing a workout and they need to cool down after that, they can grab some free ice. Making our way into the pull through area. This is the bigger part of the firehouse. And this station's unique to me because every firehouse that we've seen so far on station cribs, they've had pull throughs, but they haven't utilized them. This company actually does a pull through system. So they're close to the street up front. They're able to make their way around to the back, pull through, and they got nice wide doors, nice wide base. So these engines fit in very safely. You don't have to worry about backing it up or hitting the building. The other two rooms that are in the engine bay here are the laundry facilities. That's actually for all the truck rags, but also for personal laundry. But as we make our way into the workroom area or the mechanics room, this is where they do a lot of their laundry for their gear. They don't like to send out their gear because it's gone and you won't get it back in a timely manner. So they actually designed it so they can do their own laundry. Uh, they have a washer and they have a dryer for all their gear. This facility is actually made so they can maintain it. They got a workbench. They got all the tools they need to make sure they're functioning and ready to go. Westchester Fire Department as a whole runs about 1,500 calls a year. So breaking it down into three different fire stations, and this fire station runs about 500 calls a year, is very taxing on a volunteerism service. So, you know, the one thing that they really stressed to me when I was walking around is it's all about family and community. So in order to do that, they wanted to make sure that this place is very comfortable for everybody, not just for the volunteers, but also for their families. So as one of the newest additions to this place is this gazebo behind me. This is a place where, you know, not only on hump day hangouts, but any day of the week that they want to bring in family. If you're on a fire call or you just want to hang out and do a fire pit and chill and get to know each other, this is the place they wanted to designate to open it up to all the members that they have, including their family. This is wrapping up another episode of Station Cribs. Thank you for watching. We are in Westchester, Pennsylvania, in Chester County. This is Goodwill Fire Company, Station 52, company number two of the Westchester Fire Department. If I've met your expectations and uh, it's everything that you guys like, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification, and look forward to the next video.